Hey everyone, this is Mike Andes, and you're listening to episode 126 of the Business Bootcamp Podcast. Today, I'm answering a question that came in about vending machines, and I'm sharing with you my biggest fear currently that I have about business. Okay, so let's start off with a question. It comes from Aaron. Aaron writes in via email, and if you have your own question, you can go on a Business Bootcamp Podcast, send me the question from the application page, or you can email me at business biz- Business Bootcamp Podcast at gmail.com. So let's read Aaron's question and we'll dive right into it. Aaron says, I'm, uh, says, Hi, I'm Aaron. <clears throat> you may remember me, f- remember me from your cu- last couple of webinars. I follow your podcast every episode and enjoy it. Lots of great info. Anyway, I have an idea for a vending machine for auto shops for people that like to pick up their cars after hours. This would lock up their keys in the machine and unlock it when I give them a one-time passcode if they're paid up. If not, there would be a credit card reader with a small display to select their name and vehicle once they make payment there. Keys would come out the bottom like a pop machine or something. This machine takes some liability off of me for putting keys under mats or fuel doors, etc. and is convenient for people that can't make it before closing time. I think dealerships especially would be interested. This could also be linked to already existing shop management software systems to track these payments, which will equal some subscription revenue for them. I know that you have dealt something, dealt with something like this with your smoothie machine and was wondering how I get my idea to prototype. Okay, so um, first of all, Aaron, I think it's a great idea. And th- first of all, also thank you for joining us on the webinar. He- Aaron has been on the past c- couple weeks on Landscape Business Course, landscapebusinesscourse.com. He's been on the weekly webinar, and even though he's not in the landscaping industry, I-, I hope he's been able to get some content and good value out of it. So that was cool. And so uh, first of all, great idea, Aaron. I really think it is a problem because like even with our trucks that we have now when they need repairs and stuff, like I can hardly ever get back to the shop in business hours to pick them up. So if I was able to have something like this, it'd be great where I just show up after an email, you know, hey, your, your truck is done, this is what it's gonna cost, and either A, you could pay from right there somehow, or B, they just tell you, you know, you can pick it up, pay with your credit card right from this machine, like that'd be sweet. And then you get your keys and you can drive away. Uh, so first of all, great idea. As far as getting your prototype, um, we did so with BioShakes. For those of you who don't know, it we created a, a protein shake vending machine. It's all with a, a very automated touch screen and very sophisticated. However, I can't really give you. I'm not going to recommend the company that we used. In fact, they it's been an absolute nightmare working with them, and it's been the reason why we still aren't out in the public is because we spent a boatload of money with them and then they essentially changed their name so they went bankrupt and so we can't go after them but then all of a sudden they're not like servicing their back end of the machine which makes problems with the credit card processing it's been an absolute joke so I can't really recommend them I would love to but sorry about that but there's plenty of companies out there as far as automated retail vending is concerned just don't use a little company called AVT automated vending technologies out of Corona, California. Um, so that's, that's you know, I can't help with as far as specific companies that I've worked with before. Aaron, however, there are plenty of them out there. And I'd just find one that, that was, like it's not like the technology, the hardware part of your idea isn't new or amazing, like uh, groundbreaking, which is fine. It, but it's how you're using it. And I think that's where the breakthrough will be is, and there's really two ways you could take this one, Aaron. You could monetize it in two different ways. One, you could sell the machines to the dealerships. And so you'd actually sell them to, like, you know, 50 grand, for instance, and they'd be able to buy this machine from you. And then it would be a service to their customers that they could market, essentially. And so you could go that route. Or you could have it where you essentially give them the machine, but then you get a cut of all the transactions. And so what, I, what you could do is something like you get 5%, but then you pay credit card processing fees, which might be 2 to 3%. So you essentially would get a recurring revenue model of like 2 2.5% of all transactions that go through there. You, you get that. 
And so it's really it, it's you know interesting both ways. And I think as far as scaling it, if you're able to give them away, it'd be probably better because then you can essentially just tell the dealership, hey, that you can use this for absolutely no upfront cost. It's just going to be a little bit of processing fees. But hey, you're going to get business owners, you're going to get really business uh, oriented people that are working late hours and can't get to your shop and you're going to drive new business and da 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 da. And so they might go for that pitch and then if it proves itself, then and you get traction that way like that if you do go that right that route you're going to need to get funding because you need to fund all of those machines that you're giving away essentially and so that's kind of what we are in the deciding for BioShakes aside from the fact that our manufacturer the machine is an absolute joke and we're having problems with that and we we almost need funding to just go find a different manufacturer and start over again literally with the technology which is an absolute joke um, but hey you live and learn um, but that's kind of what we ran into. Either A, we were going to be selling it to gym owners, or B, we would be giving it to them, and then we'd be getting some sort of recurring model, whether we lease it to them or we get a transactional fee. Uh, and so that's what you can do too, Aaron. Uh, either A, you sell it to them, and then they market to their clients as a service, or B, you get some sort of recurring revenue based on every transaction. So. That, let me know if you have questions on that in the future, or if you actually start going forward with a prototype on how to market that, because I think that's really interesting of uh, marketing that to dealerships. So uh, let me know if you have any more questions on that. Now, second part of the show today. My biggest fear right now concerning business, because it's not my biggest fear in general, uh, I have much more important things in my business and my life going on. Um, and so, uh, but as far as business is concerned, right now, like the snapshot in time, uh, I'm going to talk to, but to you about a fear that I have. So the fear is, in a nutshell, that I come across online as one of the gazillion gurus and salesy, slicky, like, like people who have no, like the business coach people. I don't want to come across like that. Um, and the people who, even worse, are that way, have no business experience, and they're trying to sell products to people around their consulting and their masterminds and their courses. And so the reason this kind of comes up is because, as you might have known, and if you listen to the show, is uh, landscapebusinesscourse.com is really the first course that I've made because now I have like nine years of experience in the industry and I feel like I can offer a lot of value to people starting out or to people who want to scale and actually make a really profitable landscaping business. And so I give a very defined roadmap to doing that. And so we just recently also launched Landscape Business Course Podcast, which is all free content. And like, I guess I guess my fear is that people literally join the show right now, like Business Bootcamp Podcast, they hop, they hop onto the podcast, they haven't heard me for the past two years, and they hear me pitching this product, Landscape Business Course, then they go there, and you know, they, then it's like, it just seems so classic web guru, like salesy, like I don't want to appear like that, and so like you get on there and there's like a, a just like I give some uh, tips on like the five things to keep your business uh, growing and scaling, and five things that keep small businesses small, and then I, I, uh, I push people to join the webinar, which is we talk about the same thing and we go more deep, deeply about that. We talk about the role of an owner within a business, how that needs to evolve. We talk about the three marketing methods that I've used in my landscaping business. And so then at the end of that webinar is when I really pitch the landscaping course, like the full out, all the modules. I give away all the marketing material with templates so people can actually use them. I give people like my employee contracts, my commercial contracts for the landscaping business stuff and maintenance agreements and so I pitched that you know and so this is the thing though I like so a lot of people out there listening right now have heard me for months if not the past two it's been over two years now that I've done the show and those people know that I I'm not doing this for money they know that I'm doing it to try to provide value because it's something I love to do and until like episode 80 something, we never even made a penny. Like it was in episode 80 something is when we started getting sponsors for the podcast. 
and that worked out great and I have a whole bunch in line especially since after I went to FinCon down in San Diego and have more sponsors and businesses wanting to sponsor the show. I felt not to go down the sponsorship route for now because it's money like I guess it's, you know it, we're, we, would be, we were monetizing it but we're honestly like if I was just sponsoring it like we've done the past few episodes if I was just pitching my landscape business course I'd end up making more money that way anyways uh, so <clears throat> I don't know like even the sponsorship thing the main reason I didn't want to do that in the first place was because I don't want to come across as that like I'm doing this for the money part and I just feel like it my advice even becomes slanted to some degree when I become blended in with all of the other media printers, as they call themselves. Um, in other words, like I don't mind media printership. Like I'm obviously now in it because I'm selling stuff online, but I feel like so many of them don't actually have real business skills or experience, and they're leading a lot of people, giving a lot of really hardcore advice without actually having the assets in the form of experience to prove it. So that's like why I didn't do a course on, say, podcasting. Because I'm not like the best podcaster, I know that. I didn't do it on you know, making YouTube videos or social media. Like, that's not my lane. My lane is landscaping and lawn care because I've done it for nine years and made successful businesses. So that's why I did a course on it, right? Like, what I fear, though, is people are out there making courses on any women, you know, whatever they can get their hands on, essentially and then they're just trying to sell and market it and put people into some funnel and like I'm not into that stuff I'm not into trying to like scam and scheme and ha figure out people how they're gonna you know get into my sales funnel and all that stuff like I don't a b split test and all that stuff even though even though like I could like I know how to I know how the marketing and it works like it, it definitely works but I'm not I just don't know I don't know, like, I don't, the last thing what I'm afraid of, like, to wrap this up is, like, the, my fear part is that someone would come to the show now and listen to me and think that I'm just one of those salesy people when they haven't heard the past two years of just giving content, answering literally thousands of questions. Like, I need to actually get the numbers on it. Well, I almost guarantee you we've hit 2,000 questions that I've answered now because I think I was around 1,000 at like episode 90 like when, like when that's when it started to really grow in the past 30, 40 episodes is when we get more people on the show and so if you think about like every episode we get like, you know, five to 10,000 people listening and so even if 1% of those people write a question, like you can just imagine how many questions I get and I answer every single one, every single one. I might have missed like literally less than a dozen of those questions and they are literally because I like lose them in my email sometimes when I'm, I'm uh, answering them or like I, I start typing I forget about it and somehow I just lose it so there's probably been a few that I've, I've literally just messed up on and I've lost them but I answer every single question that comes in every single question and I haven't got a penny from 99% of them like yes um, some businesses want to do more consulting stuff and they want like a longer term relationship and they they, came, they come forward and, and offer to pay me something to do something a little more long term and I'm still down with that but like you've never heard me pitch consulting on here because I just feel like it would just it would just because like if right now people ask questions they expect it you don't expect an answer but like they, they are happy like super overjoyed to get an answer like they and I usually get back to as soon as I, I can and so it's very personable and I feel like if I even offered a consulting uh, fee that people could upgrade to it would immediately become like when I give my answer back to people it'd be like oh is he giving me a good answer because and really thorough and researching my industry because he thinks I'm gonna buy his product or you know and buy more consulting like I'm not into that at all and so that's why I don't pitch on here, you know, buy an hour of my time for $1,000 and or, you know, for $5,000, I'll walk you through your e-commerce setup or, <clears throat> excuse me, or for, you know, 10 grand, I'll we'll do, set up some marketing mix for you. Like, that's why I haven't done that. Some people have approached me and they offer me the money to do multiple Skype calls and stuff with their team. And I'm totally down with that. I absolutely love to do that. Like, this is, this is what I'm passionate about. Is helping entrepreneurs and small business owners like this is this is why I did I started the podcast two years ago and that's why I spend my nights answering questions instead of sleeping and um, that's why that's why we started the podcast and so I don't want to ever confuse people 
by offering consulting and like pitching that number one and number two i don't want people to join the podcast now and be like oh he's he has this podcast thing that he does like this business boot camp podcast so that he can then gain the audience and then pitch his landscape pride his landscape course like literally i was so like this this annoys me so much i almost st- i was almost thinking about giving away the course and then I thought about, I was like, you know what, if I did that, people wouldn't, like, people stop paying attention sometimes when they don't have to give something, when they're just getting stuff for free. Like, suddenly, the, all the documents and the agreements, the commercial stuff that I would be giving away for free, instead of people actually using it, it'd just be my competitors being like, hey, great, I can use his stuff and, like, steal it from him. And I know he, he charges people per hour, and I know how he does his pricing. And so that just gets lame. Like, I don't care if people buy it and they actually really, like, want to start a business and they're super diligent and they buy the course because they really need, you know, th- like, they're actually going to take it seriously. And so that's why I, I kept the price tag on there. But, I like, I'm telling you, I do not want to come across, like, some of these other people out there. Like, I see it all the time. And so... I guess that, that's my fear, and so I'm going to wrap it up here real quick. Um, but that <clears throat> that's what I've been thinking about, and I I really want the podcast to be a documentation of what I've, I do in the next 10 years, because I think in 10 years, you know, if I'm, if I'm, this, the Gary Vaynerchuk right now, he does the Daily V and kind of start, start has started to document what he's doing, but when he started that, he already had a company that was worth three, four hundred million, no, like 200 million when he started daily v like a year ago and so it was cool like i i still listen to those and everything but like imagine if you if you if 15 years ago when he was doing what's called wine library and started that stuff what if he would have been documenting his everyday journey of entrepreneurship then <clears throat> and <clears throat> excuse me and if he was able to answer questions about entrepreneurship back then, and then you're able to see the evolution of the way he gave advice. And so that's really what I want to be doing with the podcast, and I don't want anything else to distract me from that. And this is what I'm passionate about, and I would love to, in you know three to four years, sell my landscaping business, sell BioShakes, um, sell some of the other stuff, the landscape business course, the assets there, or do something like, like like get rid of all that and really focus more on the consulting, focus more on building uh, businesses and uh, with small business owners and helping them out. And then really like my goal like long term really for business is to take failing businesses, buy them, and then just like put my stamp of how I do marketing and business and management and sales onto the company and then flip the companies. Like essentially I want to be what people do for houses as far as flipping houses, I want to do for businesses. Like that's what I want to do because I really feel like I can step into most industries, figure it out, get the, get the concepts of it, and then just implement good business like good business like whether it be managing people or marketing or sales or advertising i think i think uh, a lot of companies that are failing can be turned around with the right management getting the right people on the bus and things like that and that's something that i feel like i can do and i think in 10 years that's something that's super interesting when i'm 35 40 and taking companies that are going down the drain and I can buy them for two or three million and turn them around within a few years and sell them for a hundred million. So that's really what my goal is um, from a business standpoint, making money. And I think priority though is to give other entrepreneurs, small business owners, young people, millennials, the opportunity to to follow the steps that I have to achieve what they want out of life. And it's not always money. It might be more time with their family. It might be all the other things that they are wanting to get out of life and what they consider to be a success. And I want to help other people get to that place. And so today was just like a heart to heart of what the podcast is all about, what I'm doing online. Obviously, I want people to join Landscape Business Course because I believe in it so much. But I'm probably going to not pitch it as much. Like, I'm still going to talk about it on the podcast because so many people have asked me about how I do it and all of that. And so I'm still going to pitch it, landscapebusinesscourse.com. Check it out, webinar. Uh, we have every couple of Thursdays, and you can ask questions and everything. It's very cool. But, um, yeah, I just don't want to come across as an, another sales guy. And so I think I'm just going to wrap it up from here. And... Uh, 
Just been thinking a lot about that one to get off my shoulders. All right, everyone. Thanks so much. This is Mike Andes on the Business Bootcamp Podcast. If you enjoy this one and if you are in the landscaping business, you'd also probably want to check out Landscape Business Course Podcast. So just search it out on iTunes and you can find that. I already think there's uh, seven or eight episodes up there now. And I'll be getting another four or five up as well as starting the blog over at uh, podcast.landscapebusinesscourse.com. That's it for today, everyone. Episode 126 on the Business Bootcamp Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Andes, signing off.